God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church, but to be empty. When Archbishop Benson in the house, I wanted to change the fortune of Benin City. The Lord gave him strange instructions. He said, at night, go around the city and go to a roundabout and pray there. When he did it for some days, the signal of what he was doing began to enter the cove. He wasn't talking to anybody. He was walking in the night to a roundabout to pray and prophesy. After three days, they picked the signal in the demonic cove. And the next time he came, he saw a pot and they butchered some strange meat that he doesn't know which animal it came from. They came to set a trap ahead of him. Because they know what this man is doing if of setting the balance. That means what is happening in the city, there is also a demonic watcher watching the program in the spirit. And so they are not moved, no matter the reforms you bring. They are not moved. They are only moved if somebody through priesthood is beginning to affect the program. Because the reason every young lady wants to be naked, even they don't know. The reason every government official wants to loot money and go to Dubai, even they don't know. It's a program. And so no matter the advice you give, it won't work until you go back to the foundation where those negative programs were, were, were written and you begin to change it. If you start changing it, they will visit you. That's when you will know that you are doing business in the spirit. You are not doing business because you have a church and you are preaching. You are doing business because the spirits are aware of your activity. And the only activity the spirits are aware of are the activities on the altar. Ebenezer! And suddenly, the hand of God appeared. And the whole army moved back. Even the land that they took from Israel were retrieved. We cannot take the media until priests arise. We cannot take the government until priests arise. We cannot take the economy until priests arise. There are those from among us that God will send there. But the reason they will be effective is because we are praying. Four years ago, the Lord told me, He said, I'm raising three categories of men. He said, some of them are apostolic missionaries. He said, that's where I'm putting you. You will travel around the nations and you will preach the gospel of the kingdom. He said, but be mindful to know that what God is doing has a triangle, is a triangle. He said, there are those that will never be known. But the reason you will be effective on the field is because they will be effective on the altar. Because the reason the church in Colossus will succeed is because Epaphras is praying. If Epaphras stop praying, the church in Colossus will die. He says, so while you are traveling, you need to be aware that there are intercessors who are praying. The same way you have bought deans to take nations for God by traveling to those nations. He said, that's how others will have bought deans to take nations on their altar. And so he said, be careful only to go to where I send you. Because where I send you is where the intercessors have conquered. So we don't go to nations because the door opened. We go to nations because we are sent. Because if you go where an intercessor has not covered, you will be in trouble. Because this thing is partnership and synergy in the spirit. And the Lord also told me, don't venture into any phase or any project until I tell you. Because the projects that you are supposed to carry out, you won't pay for it. He said, there are sons of consolation that I'm raising. Their own body is to sponsor the kingdom. So if I go to a nation that God has not sent me to, I will be a victim. It means prayer has not covered that nation. And if I don't have enough authority to survive, I may die there. And so even though doors open, I will consult with God to find out which nation he's sending me to. I started having invitations to America from 2017. There are many nations that they paid flight, paid for hotel allocation. Since 2018, I've not gone. Because God said, go only to the nations that I send you to. Because those who are praying for your kind of calling, they have to first of all take that nation in prayer before you can manifest in that nation. The Lord also told me, don't start a project until I tell you. Don't be creative. The only projects you can execute are the ones I tell you. Because when I tell you, the people who should sponsor it, I've already spoken to them. Because there are three quadrants. There are those who are praying who will never be known. 
there are those who are all over the place who are speaking for God and there are those who are sponsoring with their finances God will exhort their horn and give them wisdom for wealth creation but the reason is because there is a kingdom to sponsor and so their burden is to find genuine men and genuine kingdom projects and sponsor it and there are others who will be on the altar nobody will know them when a popular apostle comes here you want to give him a seed and have him impart you but there are many sitting here that have more stature than me preaching to you but their place is behind the altar nobody will know them it's in heaven that they are honored but it's for the program of God to find expression you will be greatly mistaken when you think the man who is traveling from nation to nation or the man who gathers 10,000 people is the real mighty man no that man is the one showcasing what the intercessor and the financiers are doing the people who are doing the real work are the intercessors and the financiers if the financiers stop the screen will vanish if the financiers stop the rolling headlight will vanish if the financiers stop the television station will close down the reason you find the excellence is because somebody is paying and if the intercessors stop the miracles will stop if the intercessors stop the souls will stop because the hearts of men are not pricked because you preach an intelligent message the hearts of men are pricked because the holy ghost is working on them and those who mobilize the holy spirit are those who are on the altar it's a technology for taking systems and in the same way there are certain intercessors that pray for nations there are certain intercessors that pray for leaders and so the reason a nation will do well is because the quorum of intercession for that nation is complete i tell you kenya will struggle until the quorum of intercessors are complete for kenya no matter the apostles that come it is the intercessors that opens the heaven over a nation there are many people in kenya today that god has a portion to pray for canada and so they may be kenyans but the destiny of canada is with them and there are many people in ghana that god has put a body to pray for kenya because this is a mystery it's a mystery so that divine programs can find expression there will be no legislation until priesthood is fully established there are systems that need 1000 intercessors to pray for until the glory descend for that system to be conquered you may be there preaching for five years nothing is happening don't be discouraged the quorum is still growing the day that quorum is complete you will just say jesus and the glory of god will fall so don't be discouraged we are in different quadrants we have different ranks and there are different quorums there are nations that will never turn to the lord until the quorum of intercessors are complete and so if god told you to pray for kenya kenya this is not the time to back down maybe kenya needs 100 intercessors and you are the 98th recruit maybe they are remaining just two and so when the devil knows that the recruitment is almost complete he begins to discourage those who have been praying maybe god started the recruitment 10 years ago imagine out of 100 the first person god recruited who has prayed for kenya for 10 years and maybe the visitation of kenya is january 2023 because in january 2023 the 100th recruit will come and then suddenly the devil will go and tell the first recruit 10 years ago you have prayed for 10 years nothing has happened won't you rest because the devil understands spiritual intelligence because if that person comes out what you make 100 will go back to 99 but it's a technology it's a technology that systems are manipulated by spirits and the first way to take over a system is not by sending technocrats is by raising priests who can bet that system in the spirit when a system is bet in the spirit even those who are not too experienced can take over that system but if a system has not been bettered in the spirit no matter the labor you put in nothing will change this is why the intercessors are the most significant part of our ranks the intercessor is more relevant than the apostle the intercessor is more relevant than the evangelist because the efficacy of the operations of the apostle and the evangelist is dependent on the efficacy of the job of the intercessor in fact your evangelical authority and apostolic horn will not be strong until yourself become an intercessor 
men are not aware of this. The thing is when in their family, three doctors emerge, that the family will have rest. And then they have seven doctors now. Nothing is changing. Because you don't need a doctor to change a family. You need a God to change a family. And the way you walk with that God is through priesthood. Many are thinking until the president comes from a particular part of the country or a tribe that things will change. You don't need a particular tribe to change a nation. You need God to change a nation. And the way that God works is when men are on the altar calling upon his name. This is how spiritual legislations take place. Israel was in captivity in Egypt for 430 years. Nothing happened until a man who met God showed up. We now realize you don't need number. You need people who have met God. Sometimes God can apportion a quorum, but by all means, men must meet God. Israel was in captivity for 70 years in Babylon until a man began to pray. He said, I, Daniel, I understood by books that the year of captivity of Israel was 70 according to the writings of Jeremiah the prophet. He said, when I knew it, I did not take any pleasant bread. I prayed for 21 days. While he was praying, Gabriel and Michael were mobilized. Without intercession, everything we are doing is in the flesh. And no spirit is impressed, no matter how intelligent you are. They know more than you can ever know. What disarm spirits are the kinds of fraternity you form and the spirits that stand for you against the spirit that are against you. And so the second thing intercession does is to deliver systems and territories that are regulated by spirits. The media is regulated by spirits. The government is regulated by spirits. The economy is regulated by spirits. If you want only the spirit of God to find expression, you must raise an altar for those systems. That altar is what manipulates those systems in the favor of the righteous. And so first, intercessions deliver people. Simon, Simon, Satan de desires to have you, to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. When thou art recovered, strengthened thy brethren. Secondly, intercessor or intercession delivers systems and nations. He said, Epaphras is one of you, a born servant of Christ, laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. That's the whole church in Colossus that one man was sustaining in prayer. Daniel prayed for Israel in Babylon and he engendered deliverance. And then thirdly, what this kind of intercession does is that it brings us superior intelligence to recolonize our world. Even if the demons are checked out, the level of destructions they've caused will require kingdom technocrats to change it. And so this is the third thing that happened. When the intercessors perfect their jobs, then God begins to alight upon people that is sent to different territories. And these kinds of people must come with superior intelligence. That intelligence is what we engender deliverance. When Joseph showed up before Pharaoh, when he was done talking, he said, let the king look for a man that is desperate in knowledge. And he began to tell the king what he needs to do. He said, let one, one fifth of anything produced in the year of abundance stored for the year of famine. That kind of wisdom is not in a book because the world had not experienced national famine before. They've never experienced global famine before. So you will need a knowledge that is beyond every documented literature to be able to bring deliverance. And a man that was born from the womb of the spirit showed up and he told Pharaoh what was to come. And he told Pharaoh what to do to avert what was to come. And so Joseph as one man saved the whole world from famine. It's called superior intelligence. When the king was stranded in Daniel chapter 5 from verse 11, he said, there's a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. He said, light and understanding is in this man and he has the ability to explain hard sentences. Listen, when we speak about legislation, it doesn't end with prayer. It ends with what prayer can produce. And one of the things prayer produces is wisdom that cannot be gainsaid. One of the things prayer produces is open doors that strategically position men to create change. There are some of us here 
that will need doors to open into government for us there are some of us here that need a wisdom to make a difference in the government and so when intercession is perfected intercession must end by opening that door for you and by giving you the kind of wisdom that you need in order to create that change and so when priests are born priests orchestrate administration of graces graces that bring men into corridors of wisdom and knowledge that cannot be bought or studied but knowledge that is revealed it is that kind of knowledge that we need to change our world when you see the confusion in the governments of the world do you think you can apply just the principle you picked from Harvard to change it even the western world are confused there are nations where past presidents spent all the money in that nation entered into programs that and that has indebted that nation for more than 50 years what will you come to do in four years to change that level of indebtedness you will need a wisdom that is superlative because the country you came into to, to, to head is already sold out you will need a kind of wisdom that is not of this world you will need a wisdom that is out of this world there are institutions that have been perverted have you gone to the academia students sleeping with lecturers lecturers forcing students to sleep with them in order to give them grades what will you do to recover such an institution you need a wisdom a wisdom that can bring that institution under kingdom surveillance so that the will of god can find expression have you gone into the economic sector values of currency depreciating as though a a meta is falling from an elevated platform investments that what two two billion five years ago now what only 10 million an investment that is supposed to appreciate because currency value has depreciated the whole investment has depreciated what can you do to salvage that kind of situation you will need a wisdom and so the third thing priesthood does is to fortify us with wisdom fortify us with grace that can turn rotting situation into prospects that carry the ability to save and to bring hope to a generation this is why when priesthood is going on people are not just praying people are not just knowing God people are being fortified because out of the prison a Joseph must rise out of Babylon a Daniel must rise out of Egypt a Moses must rise but it will take intercession and some of you looking at me here today you may just become the Daniel of Kenya you may just become the Joseph of Kenya you may just become the Moses of Kenya this is why we will not stop praying because it doesn't look like it yet but we know that our redeemer leave it he said i stand upon the rock to see what he will say to me and he said write the vision he said make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it he said do it tarries he said wait for it it shall not tarry it shall surely come to pass i don't know what god has destined you for but i came to speak to you tonight in the spirit and in the power of moses the one that brings people out of the pit and i come to speak to you in the spirit of joshua the one that carries men to their promised land whatever it is that god has planted in you whatever grace whatever ordination as i speak now by the spirit the hand of god is upon you to awaken you to that ordination It doesn't matter your gender. The limitations of your destiny may anchor on gender. But I come to you by a spirit that is eternal. Even the limitations of gender can be taken away. The limitations of education can be taken away. The limitations of minority of tribe can be taken away. Whatever ordination written concerning you, as you hear my voice tonight, let it become an activation of that ordination. Enter the holy of holies. I have entered the covenant of Yahweh. I have entered 
the altar of Jerusalem to Yeshua who is the word of God to my Jesus through his blood I I want to pray for someone now but before I make declarations just pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute pray passionately like somebody who is part of the future of Kenya because tonight like I said we will not only pray for men we will pray for systems and for the nation I want you to pray like someone that has a part to pray to play in the destiny of Kenya pray 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 in the spirit I am standing on the covenant of Yahweh. I belong to the family of Yahweh. I am standing on the covenant of Yahweh. Standing on the the word of God to my Jesus to his Lord I belong I belong to the family of Yahweh I am standing on the covenant of Yahweh I am standing at the altar of Jerusalem to Yeshua who is the word of God to my Jesus to his Lord I belong I belong to the family of Yahweh I am standing on the covenant of Yahweh, I am standing on the altar of Jerusalem. now the first thing God will do is that he will activate ordinations 
There are some of you carrying destinies that will affect individuals. There are some of you carrying destinies that should affect families. Ushers, help them. There are some of you carrying destinies that should affect systems. And there are some of you carrying destinies that should affect nations. Some are intercessors. Others are missionaries. Others are leaders. Others are businessmen. Others are sponsors. Right now, wherever you are, I put demand on your ordination. Ushers, help them. Usher, set them. I release the fire. Ali, I. Ali, I. of you here you are currently going through intense warfare but it's not personal it's not because of you it's because of what you represent and so now the Lord sent me to give you strength and so every one of you here that on, a, on, a, that on account of your ordination you are being fought you are being attacked and you are going through battles wherever you are now by the spirit by the spirit by the spirit by the spirit receive strength hallelujah <laughs> Visibility, you are being fought 
It's because of what you represent. The devil has gone ahead. They saw the star of Jesus when he was eight days old. Now, the Lord asked me to bring you strength. Father, from the left to the right, on the galleries and those following online, everyone being attacked, everyone being fought, everyone being contended with because of their ministries, because of their ordinations. Now, let there be a wave of the Spirit here. Releasing strength, releasing strength, releasing strength. Take that strength now. Hear this. Some of you have been, you've been discouraged. And even your altar is dying. Because it looks as if you've done everything there is to do. But things kept going down. The devil came prepared. But there is a power called synergistic power. That when you come into the company of the saints, the strength of all becomes the strength of one. He said, how beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in harmony. It's like the dew upon Mount Hermon. There, the Lord commands his blessing. Stretch your hands in my direction. There are 24 persons that God will rekindle their fire now. Ushers, you need to be very sensitive because the intensity will be heavy. Some of them will literally run. Some of them will jump. Some of them will scream. They can't contain it because there is a rekindling wherever these ones are 24 altars come alive for Kenya's sake for Kenya's sake for Kenya's sake take that fire Papa Bote Farate Hamden Hamden Lelelela Bekaya Variatoa such men needs to carry extraordinary graces and dimensions because when we are done praying there is a wisdom required to get the job done and so we can't pray the demons away and there are no men to occupy vacuums and so there are men God wants to raise tonight in the order of Daniel he said there was an excellent spirit in Daniel an excellent spirit so much so that it was the hidden queen that read his citation 
Daniel didn't need to speak about himself. Even the heathen knew that there was a man in whom dwelleth the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Now, put your hand on your head. And please be quiet if you can. As sensitive as possible. There's a wind of the spirit that will blow over this place. Hear this. The reason we do this is because the reason we do this is, is, is simple. Is this. There are certain things you can't teach. You can only impart them as a body of spirits. Because even you don't know how you have it. And even if you knew, you wouldn't have the utterance to communicate it. And so what God wants to do is to embody men with it through impartation. There is a kind of wisdom and an excellent spirit that is about to come on persons standing here tonight and those hearing online a wisdom that makes you proffer national solutions and even if you are not popular they will seek you and find you because what you carry only you have it the same grace that daniel had that they sought him even when he was in the cave wherever you are hearing me now by the spirit of god i provoke a quickening the excellent spirit the spirit of wisdom by the holy ghost take that grace now nations will be stranded until wise men rise now be numbered among the wise the wise men of kenya the wise men of kenya i call you forth by the spirit wherever you are hear the clarion call of the holy ghost step into wisdom let ancient chronicles begin to open ushers help me find them you can be in ministry you can be in business you can be in government it doesn't matter wisdom is wisdom take that wisdom now Spirit of victory, cover us with your wing. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, please bring them out so they don't fall on them. Everyone, God is touching now. Blow, help her, help her, help her. Be sensitive. Help her, hold her. Spirit of victory. Call us with your wings. Blow. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. of greatness but the devil is manipulating your minds in first chronicles 21 verse 1 it says satan moved david there are many persons that have been moved out of their destinies they keep making mistakes repeating cycles falling prey to demonic patterns and never coming to the fullness of their ordination now the programs of demons are about to break wherever you are every great man shielded enveloped and buried by demons through demonic programs and intelligence whatever they wrote concerning you i come by the testimony of the blood of the lamb 
and I cancel those writings now. Come out of that program. Come out of that program. Oh. now I'm deliberate about the prayers I'm praying because there are vacuums that have been filled there are two things I'll declare now and will happen to those hearing me number one there is a boldness that you need to enter your destiny because the journey of destiny is warfare some of you, the problem you have is your heart. Your heart is not cooked to withstand the fiery darts. Your heart is not cooked to withstand the manipulations and the battles on the corridor of destiny. Hear this. There's a phase of your life where you must be perceived as arrogant because you will need brutality to go through. There's a heart that you take. Many people quiver out of destiny because they can't bear the weight of destinies and so i pray for you now he said to ezekiel i have changed your heart i decree now the heart of a ruler the heart of a warrior the heart of a giant the heart of a more than a conqueror i release upon you now everyone reduced by the quality of their heart the lord changes that heart tonight You can be easily intimidated you are not ready for destiny you can be easily manipulated you are not ready for destiny hear this a whole nation can rise up against you let it not move you including the people jesus healed gathered together to nail him he never backed down you should be able to look at Pilate and said you are doing what you are doing because it's given to you but never back down even on the cross it was not broken I pray for you tonight. The heart that conquers, the heart that subdues, receive that heart now. If you don't want men to speak against you, then you are not ready for destiny. I speak over you tonight. You will not back down because of what men say. They can say whatever they want, they can do whatever they want, but you are going forward and upward in the name of Jesus and finally I decree over you tonight there is a favor that elevates God perfumed Solomon with so much favor that even in the midst of the enemy he kept rising I decree over you the things you cannot do for yourself the places you cannot take yourself to by the operation of the spirit of favor step into those realms now step into those realms now some of you what you couldn't do for yourself in the last 10 years by favor you will have in one month why many great men can't explain their greatness because they know something more than their hard work is at work in their lives i decree concerning you more than your effort receive more than your hard work have in the name of jesus 